Pray to the Father who is blessed and son of Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, to live and reign with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Be seated for the last one. set up on the way to the sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people who came impatient on the way, the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent a voice of the demons among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites, Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Praise the Lord and take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed to the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Take the poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. So whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to God. Let us pray a portion of Psalm 107 responsibly, dividing at the half verse. The song was printed in bullet music. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is the Lord. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim. And redeemed them from the hand of God. He gathered them out of the land. From the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took the rebellious way. They were afflicted with all sins. They abhorred all manner of food. <laughs> and they were to the Lord. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And, and they delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them. And, and they sent them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy. And the Lord has given the children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And tell the past and shouts of the Lord. I'll read from Ephesians. We were dead in the trespasses and sins in which we once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses. And we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive, together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised up <coughs> and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. But for we are what he has made, have made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand. In our way of life. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, man. Thank Thank you. 
It's an innocent remark from a child, but how many people sitting in the darkness keep trying different switches, self-help books, cults, diets, fitness programs, hobbies, philosophies, and many other ways, many other switches. Instead of checking out the source of true light and power, which we experience today, the light of Christ, our Savior. In today's wonderful and familiar passage from John, the emphasis is on light. And if Bill Batchley, yeah, Bill Batchley is watching this morning, he asked me uh, in the hospital, what was I preaching on? And I said, I don't know, because I haven't finished yet. So Bill, it's a light. In today's wonderful and familiar passage from John, the emphasis is on light in characteristic fashion. And sorry, that was Mike, actually. He <laughs> did. You do. I just met him for the first time in the hospital. Hello, Mike. <laughs> what a new color. In characteristic fashion, John makes the concept of the light stand out by repeating the word five times in the last three verses. There's a familiar metaphorical meaning where light stands for the good, or against darkness, which means evil. But in John's Gospel, Christ is the light, and John speaks of Christ coming into the world. The most severe condemnation of the people of his day, John says, was that as Christ, the light of the world, came to them, they rejected Christ. They preferred and even seemed to love the darkness. How often in our own lives do we choose the darkness rather than choosing the light? Have any of you ever thought about why the sky is dark at night? You may think that's a silly question. When the sun sets, the source of our light is gone. So the sky can no longer be bright. Even children know that. But think for a moment, we're overlooking something. The sun provides only about half the light that we on Earth should be receiving, and the other half should come from the billions of stars in the heavens. With all that starlight, why is it midnight as bright as the day? The first person who took this question most seriously was a German physician named Heinrich Olbers who lived about 190 years ago. He tried to figure out why the sky is dark at night. And even during the years that he practiced medicine, he spent part of every clear night in his homemade observatory atop his house, studying the heavens. He discovered the comet of 1815, later named after him. But Olbers is still best known for asking the seemingly obvious question. Why is the night sky dark? <clears throat> if Dr. Olbers had known what we know today about the incredible vastness of the universe, he would have been even more puzzled. Our sun and its planets are only a small part of the Milky Way, an average-sized galaxy containing 100 billion stars, which reminds us of Carl Sagan. Anybody here remember Carl Sagan on TV? who got us all thinking years ago about the, and this is the way he said it, the billions and billions of stars in the universe, all part of God's marvelous and good creation. Dr. Olbers made painstaking calculations and came to an amazing conclusion. With light shining from so many stars, the light should, the sky should not be dark at night. For 100 years, astronomers tried to solve the puzzle which became known as Olbers Paradox. In time it was solved, and to make a very long scientific story shorter, here is the answer. Stand next to a highway at night. As a car comes toward you, its headlights become brighter and brighter as it approaches. Conversely, when the car passes by and speeds away, the light becomes dimmer and dimmer. In 1924, Dr. Edwin Hubble of California's Mount Wilson Observatory made the discovery with superior instruments available to him. 
He discovered that the stars are moving away from us. Hubble saw that the galaxies were escaping from us and that the universe is expanding from that. So that the light of the stars is like the light of an automobile traveling away from us, much dimmer than if the light is coming towards us, like the light of our sun. With this amazing discovery, Dr. Holder's question finally was answered. The sky is dark at night because the universe expands. The galaxies and their stars are moving away from us so fast that the radiation we might receive from them is weakened. We know that light of itself shines on to infinity. When it comes toward us, it does us good and sustains life. When it passes beyond us, traveling into space, it does us little good, except to enjoy the twinkling stars. So it is with spiritual light that John is talking about in his gospel. As long as the light of God in Christ comes towards us, we are strengthened and enlightened and we are alive spiritually. When we shake ourselves from that light of Christ, when we deliberately avoid it and allow it to pass by, we see the light recede and diminish and leave us in darkness. All of us have experienced times in our lives when the darkness seemed to overwhelm the light, when the light seemed very weak, very dim. You may be living with some of that experience of darkness in your life this very day. And we are living at a time in the world where darkness seems to predominate and overwhelm the light. In the past, we may have pretended that really bad things only happen over there somewhere. But today, it seems like there's plenty of bad news everywhere we look that wars and famines and pandemics and terrorism and daily political conflict and division in this country we love, all of these really affect all of us and affect me. Long before technology brought our local community closer, the poet John Donne, a wonderful preacher in England, talked that no man is an island. We are all knit together, especially in the darkness. Every event that dims the light of reason and hope in some part of the world or in our own country dims it for us also. Darkness can hold both fascination and terror. Earlier in John's third chapter, under the cover of darkness, a beautiful story, Nicodemus comes in the middle of the night drawn to the light of Jesus Christ, the light of grace, of forgiveness and divine power, and the light of the world. Jesus teaches Nicodemus that God's light shines in the darkness. He gives the terror of darkness its due, but there is a profound and good news there too. The light of Christ shines forth in the darkness. The prophet Isaiah long ago foretold the people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. Those words have come true in Jesus. You and I have in some way and in varying degrees been drawn to the light of God and the God of light. In this season of light, Jesus' teaching calls us once again to be so drawn by the oncoming light of Christ, that we would be ready to live and maybe even ready to die. To give up our old selves in order to live in the light rather than to live in the darkness. The first Christian martyr, Stephen, could have chosen to live in the darkness of first century apostasy. All it would have taken was a word, but Stephen was unwilling to live in the darkness. Instead, Stephen stepped out into the light of Christ and gave his life to live in Christ's light. Theologian and pastor Dietrich Bonhoeffer could have lived in the deep darkness of the Third Reich in Germany and the horrors of Nazism, but he was ready to die in the light of Christ rather than live in the darkness. 
Today, the people who walk in darkness have seen the great light. You and I, who live in a world of deep darkness, can see the oncoming and brilliant light of Christ, as Nicodemus did. And we see it through our caring and gracious God, who comes to save us from pain and judgment of sin. May the light of Christ shine brightly on each one of us this morning. This day and later this night, may the light draw you and hold you. May it claim you and capture you, that you will always choose to step out into the way of Christ's life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We now stand and affirm our faith in the words of the mighty free. We will take you to the for the prayers of the people, the prayers of the people can be found on page five in your service. Father, well, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant them every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for Michael, our brother, for Zion of Egypt, dinner for our bishop, father of all of our priests. For our companion diocese, born in Sudan and their bishop group, Brazilian and their bishop group here. For the people of Haiti and their bishop, Sase. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Episcopal Church. We pray for St. Paul's Evansville, the Reverend Holly Rankin Zahir, and the Reverend Sue Dahagan. All our diocese and partners, all the baptized, and all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for Joe, our president, Eric, our governor, Thomas, our mayor, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will and all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who are hospitalized, including Ty McAvoy, Mike Badgley, Gene Steyer, and Jane Dye Andrews. Oh. For 
those in convalescent centers or at home, Bill Ashley, Susan Bufo, Bonnie Connor, Sonny Hurley, Henry Pearson, Mike Cannon, Ken Weitzel Sherman, Irene Alexander, Debbie Webb, Patrick Buchanan, and Sherry Valentine. For the men and women in the armed forces, our men and women in the armed forces, Ryan Casper, Ethan Lopes, Reed Braxton, Travis Reed, Anita Rodriguez, Zach Webb, Allison Woodward. For those who are homeless, unemployed, unemployed, and all those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Okay. Good to John Allen, Matt McGilvery, brother in law Susan McGilvery, and to the National Guard and the law enforcement officers at Paul Service and Hill Copper Trace in Texas, and to all part of the eternal rest. We pray you for all your saints that are there in joy. Thank you also for the new share here. We pray for those on our daily prayer list Brian Gregory, Dan Saber, Maggie Grayson, and all the Gregory families. We pray for those who celebrate birthdays and anniversaries this week, including Diane McElroy, Ellen. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others, including those who are on our current prayer list, either silently or aloud. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city. Wherever the Father and the Holy Spirit we live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. It's at the time that we have set aside to honor our friend Brian and his family as well. So, you want to speak up here, Brian, or should I come? And any family members that would like to join us, stand around up front.
reception in the parish hall after the service for Brian and his family. Please join us for that. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet one another in the name of the Lord. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, and power, and glory, ever and ever. Amen. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, and has mercy on us. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, and has mercy on us. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, and has mercy on us. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, and has mercy on us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Holy gifts for holy people.